தமிழன் என்று சொல்லடா தலை நிமிர்ந்து நில்லடா த வேர்ட்ஸ் ஆஃப் பாரதி Yes, my dear friends, we are proud to be a Tamilians because our tradition goes back at least three centuries before. And in the early classes, civilizations, you might have learnt about how our people civilized and developed in their own culture, their own way of life. At the same time, we also have the proof of various evidence found in different places by the sailors and traders of our Tamil people. And in this lesson, the early Tamil society and culture, we are going to learn what are the strong evidence and proofs that we have to prove that we are civilized before three centuries of common era. What are the evidence we have that we are going to talk about in this lesson are the four the major topics the first one classical tamil literature and the second one epigraphy which means inscriptions the third one archaeological excavations and material culture material things which are found which are becoming the evidence and the fourth one non tamil and foreign literature which are not written in Tamil, which are found in for various other countries in various other languages. We are going to talk about in this lesson the following four topics. The first one, the classical Tamil literature. The second one, epigraphy. The third one, archaeological excavations and material culture. The fourth one, non-Tamil and foreign literature. The first one, the classical Tamil literature. It consists of Tolkapiyam, that is the Padin and Mail Kanaku, and the Padin and Kil Kanaku. The Padin and Mail Kanaku are 18 major works, and Padin and Kil Kanaku are 18 minor works and the five epics. When you talk about Tolkapiyam, Tolkapiyam is attributed to Tolkapiyar, is the earliest written work in Tamil grammar. Apart from the elaborating the rules of the grammar of Tamil, the third session of Tolkapiyam also describes the poetic convention that provide information on Tamil social life. So to talk about what Tolkapiyam gives us of Tamil culture is it is giving about the Tamil grammar, Tamil rules and regulations and the second one is telling about the social life of the people. Of the Padin and Mail Kanaka, which in 18 major works, it is a text include Patu Patu, that is a 10 idyls, and Ettu Togai, the 8 anthologies. These texts are the oldest among the classical Tamil texts. We talk about Tolkapim is the earliest one, Whereas these are the oldest among all the classical Tamil texts. These Patupatu, that is the 10 idyls collection, include 10 long songs. Tirumuruha Trupadai, Purunar Atrupadai, Siruban Atrupadai, Perumban Atrupadai, Mullai Patu, Madurai Kanchi, Nedunal Vadai, Kurunji Patu, Patina Palai. Malai Padagadam are the ten long songs which are called as Patu Patu. The third part of the classical Tamil literature is the Padinan Kilkanaku, 18 minor works. It is the 18 texts elaborating on ethics and the moral life of the people. The preeminent work among these is Tirukural, which is composed by Tiruvalluvar. We know it, Tirukural has 1330 Tirukurals and it considers the question of morality, statecraft and of love. And the fourth topic of this is the five great epics. The epics are kapiyams or the long narrative poems 
of very high quality they are selapadigaram manimegalai seevaga sindamani valayabadi kundalagesi the second source for the study of tamil culture and the literature and the society is epigraphy epigraphy is a study of inscriptions what are the inscriptions inscriptions are the documents scripted on the stones copper plates and other media such as coins rings bangles or various others etc the development of the script marks the beginning of the historical period so to first to talk about the epigraphy the first one tamil brahmi inscription found in more than 30 sites in tamil nadu mostly on the cave surface and the rock shelters these caves when you talk about the caves and shelters caves are maybe mainly in the rocks or various places the forest various places these were uh, abodes of monks monks are the uh, the priests or we talk about the religious people those who stayed in the forest or stayed in the cave mostly it is found to be the jain monks the natural uh, these caves were converted into residence by cutting a drip line to the keep the rain water away from the cave and these types of in inscriptions are found mainly in these places the merchants and the kings converted these natural formations as a habitation for monks who had renounced worldly life around madurai and many such caves with the tamil brahmi inscriptions can still be seen many of them are located along the ancient trade routes which the second source of this epigraphy is the hero stone it is something interesting hero stones are the memory erected for those who lost their life in the battles and in the cattle raids as cattle were considered as an important source of wealth riding cattle owned by adjoining tribes and clans was most common practice in the pastoral society there were different different type of chief tains existed you should bring the notice of the chief tain what are the chief tains are they are the leaders of the particular clan or the society so there existed different societies different clans in the different places as of now to explain clearly to you now we are dividing divided into different countries for various resources very expanding of territories we try to fight against other countries the same thing existed before to conquer others the cattle which was a major source when the people are cattle grazing the cattle they try to attack the group and take those resources the the cattle of their own when the enemies come and attack their cattle they try to protect the souls by fighting with the enemies in the battle if they lose their life for saving the cattle they are considered to be the heroes and their bodies are buried they erect a stone on which they have inscripted that is written their names as the heroes of lose giving their life for the saving their resources that's what the hero stones tolkapiam describes the procedures for erecting hero stones what is that hero stones of the sangam mage with the tamil brani inscriptions can be found at pulimang kombai that is in tatapatti in theni district and porpanai kote in pudukote district those of the sangam mage discovered till now do not have images of sculpture hero stones of the post sangam age and the pallava period occur in a large number 
of pastoral regions specially around Chengam region near Thiruvannamalai district. These hero stones have inscriptions on the images of warriors and names of heroes. And the third part of this epigraphy is the inscription on pottery. This we have already seen in the civilization lesson. Pottery vessels from the early historic period have names of people engraved on them in the Tamil Brahmi script. Whenever a master makes a pot, he engraves, inscripts his own name as the owner of the particular pot and thus it developed more and more. For example, the pot sheds have been discovered in Arikamedu, Alagan Kulam, Kodumanal, Keeladi and many other sites in Tamil Nadu. The pottery inscribed with the names in Tamil Brahmi script have also been found in Berenik and Squazer Al Qadim in Egypt and in Kor Rohi in Oman indicating that the early Tamils had trade contacts with the West Asia and also along the Red Sea coast. People etched their names on pottery to indicate the ownership. Many of the names are in Tamil while some are in Prakrit. Prakrit was the language used by a common people in northern part of India during the Mauryan period. So they found these two languages, Tamil as well as the Prakrit are engraved on the pots. So this is the third evidence of the epigraphy. The third sources for the study of early Tamil society. The first one we talked about the classical Tamil literature, second one we talked about the epigraphy that is the inscription. Now we are moving on to the third one, archaeological excavation and material culture. Archaeological sites, archaeological excavation refers to the systematical digging a site to recover material evidence for exploring and interpreting societies of the past. Where do we find these archaeological excavations at the early historic sites are the source of evidence of the activities of the Sangam age people. Excavations at Arukamedu, Alagankulam, Urayur, Kanjiburam, Kaveri Pumbatinam, Kurkai, Vasava Samudram, Keeladi, Kodumanal, in Tamil Nadu and Patanam in Kerala provide a evidence we have of this period. Arikamedu to talk about near Puducherry is a Sangam age port excavated by the Archaeological Survey of India ASI. The British archaeologist Robert Eric Mothner Wheeler French archaeologist J. M. Castle and the Indian archaeologist A. Ghosh and Krishna Deva excavated this site. They found lots of evidence of the plant town, warehouse, streets, tanks, ring wells which are dug or made by the early people. The Archaeological Survey of India ASI, it is a central government agency that manages archaeological sites and monuments in India. The government of Tamil Nadu has its own department for archaeological called the Tamil Nadu State Department of Archaeological. The Indian Treasure Trove Act of 1878 the Antiquities and Art Treasures Act 1972, the Ancient Monuments and Archaeological Sites and Remains Act 1958 are legislation related to the preservation of archaeological remains in India. 
when you talk about the archaeological site the first one we are going to talk about material things material culture the archaeologists have found evidence of brick structures and industrial activities as well as artifacts such as beads bangles cameos intaglios and other material in these sites so we know it about what is this uh, so called the beads bangles but what are these cameos cameos and ornament made in the precious stone where images are carved on the surface like we have a coin gold coin or the silver coin in which we have carved the names of the images that's what called as a cameo intaglio an ornament in which images are carved as a recess below the surface so that is what called as this intaglio the tamil brahmi inscriptions on pottery and coins already we have talked about have also been unearthed excavated or the evidence of the various arts crafts and industries together help us reconstruct the way of life of the people of those time from this we learn and understand how they might have lived so these are the evidence so material culture is the first evidence the second one is the coins coins as a medium of exchange were introduced for the first time in the sangam age to talk about the coins coins of the cheras cholas and pandyas punch marked coins and roman coins from another another important source of evidence from the sangam age the punch marked coin have been found at kodumanal and roman coins are concentrated in the coimbatore region and are found at alagan kulam karur and madurai they were used as a bullion for their metal value as ornament used as a bullion what is a bullion it means a precious metal available in the form of ingots punch mark coins are the earliest coins used in india they are mostly made up of silver and have numerous symbols punched on them therefore they are known as punch mark coins the fourth source for the study of tamil society is a non tamil sources on the other side when you talk about this a uh, foreign accounts non tamil literary sources also offered information on early tamil society because we know it so many uh, writers came to india during the time of kings and as well as the previous time so some of the writers have written about the uh, road route the trade route as well as about the various uh, situation of india so here we also in, they have written about tamil nadu the presence of the non tamil sources reveal the extensive contacts and interaction of the early tamil society with the outside world the first one we are going to talk about is artha shastra what is this artha shastra is a classical work on economy and state craft authored by kaushalya during the mauryan period it refers to a pandyan kavataka it may mean the pearl and the shells from the pandya country the second one we are talking about mahavamsa mahavamsa the sri lankan buddhist chronicle composed in a pali language mentions merchants and the horse traders from tamil nadu and Tam south india the chronicles the songs written is a narrative text presenting the important historical events in the chronological order so that's what mahavamsa 
the third one to talk about periplus of Erythrenian Sea. What is this? Periplus of Erythrenian Sea is an ancient Greek text whose author is not known or unknown. The term periplus means navigational guide used by the sailor. The Erythrenian Sea refers to the waters around the Red Sea. It makes a reference to the Sangam Age ports of Musuri, Tondi, Korkai and Kumari as well as the Cheras and Pandyas to refer. The fourth non tamil source, the source is the Plainis Natural History. He is known as the Pliny the Elder. He was a Roman writer. He wrote a book, A Natural History in Latin. It was about the natural wealth of the Roman Empire. He also speaks about the pepper trade with India in that particular book. He states that it took 40 days to reach India from Ocells near Northeast Africa if the southwest monsoon wind was favorable. We have learnt in the geography lesson how the southwest monsoon was favorable for the traders. So that's what he is also talking about 40 days it took to reach from northeast Africa to India. He also mentions that the Pandyas of Madurai controlled the port of Bakir on the Kerala coast. A plain in lemons, he also cries over the loss of the Roman wealth due to the Rome's pepper trade with India indicate indication of the huge volume of the pepper that was traded. The fifth non-Tamil source is the Ptolemy's geography. Ptolemy's geography is the atlas of the Roman times providing a geographical details of the Roman Empire in the 2nd century AD. In that atlas, the Kaveri Pumbetinum, earlier it was called as Cabris Emporium, Korkai, that is Kolkoi, Kumaria, today it is the Kanya Kumari, and Musuri, it was known as the Musuris, are some of the places mentioned in this geography. The sixth one source is Pitugirian table. Pitugirian table is an illustrated map of the Roman roads. In the map, it shows an area of uh, ancient Tamaragam and the port of Musuris. The seventh source of the non Tamil, it is the Vienna, Vienna papyrus which is a paper produced out of the papyrus plant used extensively for writing the purpose in ancient Egypt. What is this Vienna papyrus? It is a Greek docu document a datable to a second century AD mentions about the Mushri's trade of olden days. It is at present it is kept in the papyrus museum attached to the Austrian National Library, Vienna, Austria. In the papyrus, it contains a written agreement between traders and mentions the name of the ship that is a Hermopolo and lists articles of exports such as pepper and ivory that were shipped from India to the Roman Empire. Yes, my dear students, now we are moving on to the second part of the lesson that is the Sangam Age. The first part we learnt about the sources, the four types of sources. Now we are moving on to the Sangam age, a particular time duration in Tamaragam. Sangam age or the early historic period is an important phase in the history of South India. This particular period is marked out from the prehistory because of the availability of the textual sources, namely Sangam literature and Tamil Brahmi inscription. Because of the availability of these sources, it is separated from the prehistory. Otherwise, it would have been added in the prehistory of our civilizations. 
The Sangam text is a vast corpus of the literature that serves as an important source for the study of the people and the society of the relevant period. Here the first topic we are going to what is the time duration of this Sangam age that is a chronology. There is a considerable uh, debate among the scholars about the age and the chronology of the Sangam society because these texts are generally dated uh, between the 3rd century BC and, and the 3rd century AD and the reference in the Greco-Roman texts, Bram, Tamil Brahmi inscriptions and other reference to the Cheras, Cholas and the Pandyas in the Ashokan inscription corroborate this date. It is generally agreed that the Sangam poems were composed in the early part of the historical period but were compiled into a ontologies in the later part, in the later period. The second topic of this is the Tinai we learnt in Tamil, Aindinai. So here we are going to talk about this, what is this Tinai is? It is uh, presented in the Tamil grammar work of Tolkapiyam. This concept is essential to understand the classical Tamil poems. The Tina is a poetic theme. We know it, the themes of the poems are broadly defined as Agam and Puram. Agam means interior and Puram means exterior. Agatinai. It refers to the various situation of love and family life. Whereas Puratinai is considered with all other aspects of life and deals with uh, particularly with war and heroism. The Sangam poems are set in these specific ego zones and reveal that human life has a deep relationship with the nature. When you talk about Tinai, we learned already Ain Dinai, the five Tinais or landscapes. Tamaragam was divided into five landscapes. Each region had a distinct characteristics. A presiding deity based on the occupation and the people and the culture life according to its specific environmental conditions. The five landscapes are Kurunji, Mullai, Marudam, Nadal, and Palai. What the Kurunji refers to? It refers to the hilly and mountainous region. Mullai refers to the forested and pastoral region. Marudam is refers to the fertile riverine near the river bank, river valley. Nadal is a coastal region. Pali is a sandy desert region. So these are the based on these five landscape, our Tamulagam is divided into these five divisions. That is Kurinji hilly and mountains, Mullai forested and postal, Marudam. Fertile riverine, Nadal is a coastal, and Pali is a sandy desert region. Now we are going to move on to the third part of the lesson, the Sangam Mage polity. What is the polity? It is a political order, a systematic way of ruling the people, a political power of Tamaragam. Sangam Age has its roots in the Iron Age. In the Iron Age, people were organized into chiefdoms, different groups under the leaderships. From such communities of Iron Age emerged a group of people called Vendors of the early historic period and Valeries of the Sangam Age where there's two chieftains. So we have Vendors and the Valeries. At the same time, the Maurian Empire, Ashoka, conquered Kalinga, that is Kalinga is the Odisha and the part of Andhra and Karnataka regions. So this is what a political order of Tamilagam. In that we are going to speak of particular people. We are already learnt about them. Now we are going to talk little more about the Muvendar. Who are those Muvendars? The preeminent political rulers. They are 
Cheras, Cholas, and Pandyas. They are known as the Movendars, three kings. The Movendars controlled the major towns and ports of the Sangam period. They played a major role in Tamilagam. So we are going to talk about a little bit about who are these uh, Movendars. The first one, Cheras. The symbol is bow and arrow. The Cheras refer to us Kerala Putras in the Ashogan inscription. They control the region of present-day Kerala and also the western part of Tamuragam. Vanshi was the capital of the Cheras, while Musuri and Tundi were their port towns. Vanshi is identified with the Karur in Tamil Nadu, while some others identify it with Thiruvanchai Kalam in Kerala. Paditrupattu, the Tamil speak, the book speaks about the Chera kings and their territory. The Cheras wore garlands made of the flowers of the palm tree. The inscription of Pugulur near Karur mentions the Chera kings of three generations. And they are also the use of coins of Chara kings have been found in Karur. That's why the capital Vanshi is considered to be in Karur. The Silapadigaram, another uh, very relevant book, speaks about Chara Sing, uh, Charan Singutuvan who built a temple for Kanagi, that is the protagonist of the epic. The Ilangu who composed Silapadigaram was the brother of Cheran Singutuvan. It is being spoken about very well. The second of the Movendas that we are going to talk about is the Cholas. The Chola emblem was a tiger and they issued square copper coin with the image of the tiger on the obverse elephant and the sacred symbol of the rivers. The Cholas ruled over the Kaveri Delta and the northern part of Tamil Nadu. The capital was Uriyur and the port town was Kaveri Pumbetinam or otherwise it is called as the Pumbuhar where the river Kaveri drains into the Bay of Bengal. Patinapale is a long poem about Kaveri Pumbetinam which is composed by the poet Kadailur Urdiran Kannar. Silapadigaram describes about Cholas the trading activities at Kaveri Pumbatinam. That is, Kadailur is notable among the Chola kings and is credited with bringing the forest lands under the plowing and developing irrigation facilities by effectively utilizing the water from the river Kaveri. The foundation for the extensive harnessing of water for irrigation purposes which reached its zenith in later Chola time, 10th to 13th centuries, was laid in his time. Karigalan fought battles with Pandyas and Cheras and other chieftains as well. The, the third person of this Move in there is the Pandyas. Pandyan symbol was a fish. Madurai was a Pandyas capital. Pandyas who ruled the southern part of Tamil Nadu are referred in the Ashogan inscriptions. In Tamil literary tradition credits Pandyan rulers with patronizing Tamil Sangam, that is academies, and supporting the completions of poems of various other writers. The Mangulam Tamil Brahmi inscription mentions the king Nedunjulian, that is a Nedion, another one are the various other kings were some of the important rulers of these dynasties. We talked about the two groups of the people. One is Veleris and the another one is the Vendors. 
So we talked about the way in this, three way in this, move way in this. The rest of the topics, let us see in the next session. Thank you.